All right, welcome back, guys, to the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne qualifiers for the Asian region, as we now have Polar Knight, our first map between Rain and Jadong. Yay! Awesome! Okay, so the winner of this will advance on to play against SOS for the final spot in Cologne. Um, this is going to be cool. This is going to be cool. We've already seen some phenomenal series today. I, I've got to say, some really, really nice games. Uh, and it's always a treat to end up casting uh, these Korean qualifiers. But now it's kind of at the peak. We're at Rain, Jadong, and SOS. What more could I want? This is brilliant. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure you guys are looking forward to these games as well. So we're guaranteed this PVZ, and then from there, we're either going to have a PVP or another PVZ. If Jadong, who has gone all the way from the very beginning of the bracket in the lower part, straight through. He went out in the upper bracket in the first round after unfortunately drawing Classic, who then qualified already in the upper bracket uh, in the very, very first round. So if Jadong, for some reason were able to defeat Rain and then defeat SOS. He's gone all the way through as many matches as he could have possibly played. But for now, guys, let's jump in to game number one. Now, on Polar Knight, let's see who is going to advance as we have. Spawning up to the northern position are Red Protoss, representing SK Telecom T1. He is Rain. Oh, I'm getting all wiggly and jiggly. And down to the south, we have our EG representative. It's Jadong. So let's face it, the last three players that remain in this tournament are champion quality. Actual, like, actually champion quality. Jadong won his first championship at Asus ROG NorthCon, but then before that was contending for championship upon championship. He should have an entire stack of trophies at home that he could smelt down and sell for a lot of gold but he doesn't right now. He only has the one. Then we have Rain, a WCS champion. Wait, did he speak to... He lost to Maru and then just... Anyway, he's a champion, basically. Guys, he's a champion, all right? He is a champion. And then finally, the winner of this moves on to play against SOS, 2013's world champion. Awesome. Okay, so... Regardless of who goes to Cologne, we're going to have a champion. Yay. OK, so Rain's opening up with Gateway Expand. Meanwhile, we have Jadong looking to go for Hatchery first here on Polar Knight. Now, um, what's uh, abundantly apparent is that we've seen a quite a few Protosses in the past two days or three days or so, uh, if we look across a lot of the tournaments, that are still trying to go for some big, big two base plays on a map like this. <clears throat> So uh, whether or not Jadong wants to identify that, seize that, uh, that remains to be seen. But he's going to go for triple hatchery before spawning pool. Because that's just how Jadong rolls, guys. That's just how Jadong rolls. OK. Uh, so he's going to get that hatchery down. And poor little Rain, he doesn't really see too much about this. Um, but Jadong, he knows plenty. He knows that there isn't a Nexus there. He knows there isn't a wall off there. He's going to poke straight on in and see that ge uh, gateway. And now take a gas. There's no way he can't. Uh, oh, okay. So he's done it. Uh, there's no way he can't really. He can't really deal with a gateway expand, unless you've got gas. Unless you've got speed on the way uh, to eventually deal with what your opponent's going to throw at you. Because Rain is heading straight across the map with that initial zealot. Uh, oh, well, actually, he's chilling out for now. Um, okay. But still, he has the option to get aggressive if he would like to. Speed is not going to be done for quite a long time, despite it already. Um, the motion's been set already to go towards that for Jadong. And the Mothership Core, as well as Stalker, if that wants to come out anytime soon to play, once he has the right gas build up here, uh, makes this poke out a very, very dangerous one, a scary one. One that Rain has executed hundreds upon hundreds of times and can make it work. Of course, Jadong moving his overlords to the right locations to eventually scout in later on. And he does know about the Nexus positioning for now. Positioning, lol. He does know about the Nexus being built for now. So, behind this, Triple Queen production. He's going to have a huge influx of, uh, uh, of income very, very soon if he's able to find the right drones. 
and send them to the appropriate bases. But aside from that, Rain just goes for a Stargate. He's going to try and uh, play this out a little bit more normally. Of course, there is the option here for him to go for some three gateways worth of aggression. And actually, this probe is being a bit sneaky. Uh, he did look as if he was going home. Uh, through a second for a middle, through the middle of the map, but he's looking to place a pylon down over in this location or up here uh, to maybe then eventually try and put on some hurt against an opponent that was arguably pretty greedy. So it's going to be the Phoenix actually as well. Now one cool thing here is that what we could see is that he probably will reveal a Phoenix very quickly to kill off an Overlord and then uh, use that also to if we see that a pylon actually go down on this left-hand side, once it's revealed, generally they force out spore crawlers. Although Jadong in the past hasn't actually built spore crawlers that quickly against this. So he can quite easily uh, warp in a few zealots over on this left-hand side as well to then start focusing down uh, spore crawlers in those mineral lines and then leaving those bases completely open and vulnerable to some kind of attack by the Phoenix leaving those drones vulnerable. And there is that pylon now to go in down on the left-hand side. So Rain, from this point, is looking to just really pressure this. Again, there's that spore crawler. If the zealots can get on top of that and kill that off, that would be good. But now they're also going to have to contend with the very, very likely threat of roaches coming out soon. The roach one's just about to finish up. Jadong's timed this out quite nicely. He's going to have to use the queens as well as zerglings to buy him a little bit of time. If he actually has any zerglings, he only has four. They did find the pylon up to the top left, but Rain is already looking to push on with this. And he actually catches the queen here on the retreat out. Nice, ta uh, nice taunt indeed. And look at that, the spine crawl, the spore crawler going to go down super, super fast. He doesn't care too much about the drones as long as this mineral line is left very, very open and very vulnerable. Also picking up the Queen just before it gets a bit more damage off on that Mothership Core. And the Zerglings are trying to kill off that reinforcing pylon, which is oh so important. Queen also comes along and will get that. Oh, one health. Oh, but he, he dropped it. Why did he drop it? He dropped the Queen. Uh, so he didn't actually have to lose that Mothership Core there, did Rain. But he drops the Queen in the end. And, well, that's not the best of positions here for Rain. He's going to continue to try and pile on the pressure, though, still. Only one drone has gone down so far. Another Spore Crawler is in production. But with the amount of lifts that we've seen from those Phoenix, they can't really do anything to this drone line just yet. That pylon to, to the top left still lingers, still survives. And the Zealots warping in are helping out considerably now. He's got himself another three kills. Four kills. Five kills. Wait, no, four kills, because he already had one. <laughs> And he's going to get the Spore Crawler. So, he, well, there is another Spore. So, I really like the addition of the second Spore Crawler. Two makes it all the harder for Rain's army to really synergize around that location. Good Micro with the Phoenix, though. Will be able to get another Queen. Ah, uh, for the price of a Phoenix in the end, because Jadong was continually uh, repositioning the Queen's Focus Fire. So, that was also well done by him. But for now, during all of this, Rain behind it has transitioned onto the Robo. He's getting Immortals out. He's got that Robo Bay going down as well. And we see another drone having died off, but that Zealot will be cleaned up. And then with that, we now have the transition onto Hydralisk. So it's going to be Roach Hydra as the big, big committal here for Jadong, whilst we have Rain establishing his third base. Now, this is the point of contention earlier on for Azurg. It's always their third base. But as we flow into the mid game, the big point of battle will be Protoss third base, especially on this map, more so than any. Um, so we'll see now if Colossi numbers can come out to hold strong if we see a big swell of Roach Hydra. I mean, with all of that going on, we're at the 11 minute mark now, and there was a lot of battle over here. In total, he got nine workers, but he's still at 71 workers. So Jadong's economy held on strong during all of that initial pressure. Now the Phoenix are having a little bit of a hard time scrambling to find something to kill. Well, catches a drone. Might get himself an Overseer. Noticeably, he decides not to focus down the Overseer because it would have hatched and then healed up anyway. Zerglings do get confirmation that there is a third base underway here and a fourth base for Jadong does now rise over to the left. 
But Colossi being out means that these Roach Hydra numbers are going to have a little bit of a more difficult time and a bit of a difficult task as to putting on some pressure at this third base. So now, Jadong, with these supply counts being as they are, with Rain transitioning to this third base very, very cleanly, um, Jadong's going to have to find an ulterior route, I believe, in this game. Of course, the ulterior route for Jadong in this matchup oftentimes comes in the form of Mutalis switches later on once he's got, you know, his 7th and 8th, ninth, 10th gas geysers really cranking away. Um, but Rain is adding on Void Rays to his composition, interestingly enough. So Void Ray Colossi with maybe a lot of Stalkers or even Charge Lots underneath. Charge Lots not so much. I would, oop, hey up. Uh, I would like to see some, ah, not Phoenix die though. I would like to see the blink there being researched, and indeed it is, just to add on a lot of stalkers to that comp. Classic made it look absolutely deadly in the previous games during the day, uh, and against Jadong as well. It worked wonders. But now plus one weapons for air has started. The Corruptors are coming out to complement the Roach Hydra mix, and we even have another Queen in production, which may just be up here. Yeah, okay, it is. So. Just trying to get this going as quickly as possible. Um, now, if, if uh, I mean, it's it's a very, very hard thing to read into, but right now, Rain, uh, Rain doesn't actually know anything about this bit base up to the top left-hand corner, which if you place a pylon on this high ground and just warp down to the low ground, it's very easy to start harassing. So we're going to probably see Jadong try and construct quite a bit of static defense over at that base to the left-hand side, eventually during this game. Uh, but for now, these... Jeez, my camera's, camera works terrible today, uh, I guess, in just this series. Um, yeah, that's not going to go well for Jadong. <laughs> Poor little Hydra. You, uh, it's going to be difficult to really press into. So he's getting plus two weapons, but as his Blink and plus two finishing up here for Rain, and this is really the big timing now where he could actually do some damage himself if he was able to reinforce at a good location. Uh, the Corruptors are going to have their work cut out for them, but that's actually not that many Stalkers here for Rain. So this could do something, on in the air at least, uh, up until the point where those Force Wheels are brilliant and Rain just says no. Okay. <laughs> so Rain doing a very, very good job here in game number one. Not a single Colossus has fallen. Yes, some Void Rays have, but in for the greater good, the Void Rays lose and die. And Rain, there you go. GG, just too much. Rain executed the initial aggression very, very nicely to then transition onto his third and really neat leave no openings for Jadong to then try and press his third. So, or Rain's third at least. So now Rain is currently one game up in this best of three. We're waiting for our second invite into this series. Big thanks for joining me here, guys, on the stream. And it's not over just yet. We have game number two invite onto Frost, which is the map we've seen first in almost every series today, aside from this one. GLGL to these guys. Uh, and Rain is one game away from advancing on to play against SOS for that Intel Extreme Masters Cologne spot. We already had Classic moving on. Um, not a single Zerg has moved on yet. Across all qualifiers, we have five Terrans and two Protoss at the moment. Um, and we are now just waiting to see if the last Zerg Hope in the qualification process can make it happen in the form of Jadong. If Jadong can't do it, no one can. All right, so we're loading up onto Frost. Let's jump, jump on in as we do have, spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner here as our red Protoss, representing SK Telecom T1. He is a rain. And up to the top left, we have our lovely little Zergi, the last Zerg hope for the qualification process of the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. He is Jadong. And as always, sends that Overlord down to the south. Down to the south. Alrighty, so what are we going to see Jadong pull out from this point on? He had a hard time against um, Classic on this map. Classic shows uh, Protoss the way. And unbelievably, Classic's fan... Classic's Team Liquid fan club was only created like yesterday uh, after his results in Pro League, so... That's on Team Liquid now. There is a classic fan club. He played 
amazingly well today, uh, as well as yesterday during qualification. And now we see who will join him. Will it be Jadong? Will it be Rain? Or will it be SOS? Jadong's hopes hang in the balance here as Rain. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for Jadong, he has two amazing Protoss to go through. All right. So, spawning pool. Oh, imagine if we get, actually, imagine if we have Jadong versus SOS in the next round. Like, a rematch of BlizzCon final. That would be sick. But I think that Rain just stands too strong a player here to allow Jadong to do this. It's going to have to be a great comeback here from Jadong. He spots the Nexus. Uh, likewise, though, Rain is going to head straight on up to the north with his probe and see what's going on from Jadong. Jadong's not going to take any risks. He's not going to go for triple hatch before pool. So it's very important not to do anything too hashtag dicey at this point. As has a little bit of a look around. Sees no gases. Sees pretty much everything he wants to. And even sees the drone heading out for a third base. Meanwhile, the Nexus is about to finish up. Double gases have been taken here for Rain, and I would like to see Rain. Probably, I, I would love to see him stick to a, a very, very similar game to how he played out game number one. It really seemed so strong for him. It can be all too easy when you're playing Protoss uh, to fall into the mindset of, I'm harassing with three gates, I'm also using my Phoenix, I'm controlling all of these multitudes of units um, with the Zealots and the Phoenix dancing around trying to get the perfect position to pick up these queens, pick up these drones, focus down the spore crawler, uh, and then back at home, your macro just slips. But Rain, I mean, he showed in game number one that he just doesn't fall apart in that situation. He was transitioning on, he was adding on his third base, he was adding on his robo bay. All of this stuff really, I, I mean, makes Rain one of the best Protoss in the world. Not quite the fact that he can just do that alone. Of course, it does come down more to decision-making than anything for Rain. But his his defensive style, that he's not looking for a kill with that earlier aggression. He's just looking for incremental advantages. Anyway. Rain for now, just adding on Sentry. Doesn't have a wall off yet, but I would love to see him throw that first gas committal into a Stargate. He's gonna add on the Forge. <clears throat> and he could actually add on a, a Stargate next to that, actually. Uh, which does line up quite nicely, considering his minerals and gas. But he's gonna throw it down a gateway. So, right now we only have a Forge and two gateway soon to be about. Meanwhile, what's Jadong up to? Just adding on queens, just adding on drones. Not really too much uh, of a special design here from Jadong uh, as he's going to play this out as normally as feasibly possible by the looks of things. Uh, of course, that can uh, change in just a little bit. But with this plus one coming out so quickly here for Rain, that, in essence, det det detracts from his overall speed of which his tech could go. These pylons on the edges of the map, on the edges of his base, I'm feeling some like big gateway pressure. He hasn't taken any gases yet, it is natural. This hasn't been spotted by Jadong up until in just a second. Two extra gateways get added on, a total of four. Where is his Chrono Boost being spent? Before he does anything, I actually think he needs to take these gases to make it look like he's doing something a bit more tech heavy. Because right now, the Overlord just sees those gas and is like, well, nah, okay, I see what you're doing. Oh, interesting. Well, actually, you know, he threw a Chrono Boost into that plus one and he's getting sen uh, sentries. But with this, this could be false. I, look, this is false. He's going to transition onto a third base. Now, everything he just showed Jadong was selling the image of, haha, this is a big gateway push, haha, haha. Um, but it's not going to be so. He's going to take a very quick third off the back of this. And Jadong, seeing that there was no gases here, says, right, I know you're going to do a big uh, gateway push. I'm going to make roaches. I'm going to make burrow to try and catch you out because I don't think you will have detection when that comes. But this one ling, this one ling heading down there, oh, he sees that many sentries in that position. That, it has to be... He has to go back to drones. Wait, what's he at? 53? Yeah, he has to go back to drones. And he is going to. 
So that one link got him good intel, really good intel there uh, as to what was going on. Uh, but the overlords, they tricked him. They were betrayal overlords. They were defiant to the very end. Okay, so Rain secured his uh, third smoothly in game number one via aggression. This time, he secures it via mind games. Jadong's... Uh, uh, here, let's look at how that panned down. Because realistically, the way in which these drone counts line up didn't don't really make a whole lot of sense in a normal PVZ. When that Ling poked in, he was making roaches. He was on around 55 workers, I believe, 55 drones or something like that, in comparison to the 53, 51 probes. That's not the best position to be in here for Jadong. Really not. It makes transitioning over to this third base a whole lot easier here for Rain. <clears throat> and yes, there are 20 roaches out and about, but now Jadong almost is is forced into the mindset of he has to make something happen with these roaches and links. There is the spire going down once again here at the back of the third base, which could be spotted actually by this hallucinated phoenix, but it's just shy. What? Oh, he can't. He scouted something that cancelled it. Then he's double scouting, and he's going to see that spire. Um, so there was something behind there. I can't quite recall what. I didn't look at the foot production tab fully. That's the curse of solo casting as well as uh, observing. But now two twos on the way, and he's adding on double a stargates behind this as well. He sees all of these roaches and these lings moving forwards. He's throw down. Okay, so he's not going to push on forwards further. I would say he needs to throw down more force fields, but he's been using the energy. Uh, very, very exuberantly on these sentries just to spot exactly what's in on the cards for his opponents. And he's going to see this Spire again. I don't think he clicked on it last time, uh, the last pass over. Ooh, actually, no, he doesn't see it because of the Queens. But if he looks around the minimap, and he can see that that Spire is there. Oh, and he sees it again anyway, so. All right. What are you doing here, Mothership Core? Go home, you're drunk. Anyway, so the Roach is now piling through the middle of the map. This is quite a strong army that we're seeing from uh, from Jadong. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, he's starting Phoenix production. He doesn't want to go too over the top with his Phoenix production because right now the transition of Spire from Jadong is just not there. He needs to get a good read on what was popping just then, and I, he just barely did not see that Hydralis pop as that Hallucinate Phoenix died. But let's let's follow these Phoenix and see what they can actually spot. Because he's moving his units out of the direction of these Phoenix. He sees more Hydralisks. He can't make too many Phoenix, I don't think, from here, unless for some reason he's able to go into this engagement and pick up all of those Hydralisks very quickly with the Phoenix and kill those off quickly. This army here for Jadong is extremely formidable against 10 Stalkers, one Zeller, six Sentries? Come on. It's not going to work. All right, Jadong's setting himself up on the right and on the left. The Lings, well, actually, there's a really great, uh, fantastic place pylon up to the north here, uh, which he could make work out. War Prism even there as well to put on the harassment. But now the Phoenix... Oh, that's a lot of Hydralis. These Phoenix aren't going to do too much unless he uses them in a very, very impressive way. A whole warping of Zealots <gasps> draws his entire army back and buys him so much time. But that being said, Jadong is trying to transition onto Greater Spire. Jadong still has no clue about this Stargate transition. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. <laughs> Look, he, he, he knows nothing about this. And now the Phoenix move out into the middle of the map, but he still hasn't seen them. And now he sees them. Oh, dear me. All right, well, the Phoenix are going to start working their way through these Hydralists. The Hydralists actually can't stay for the fight because they don't have the Roaches with them to complement. The Zealots, meanwhile, up to the north, did kill off all that base. And the Roaches were trying go to go back to furiously help out, but now the Remax on 21 Roaches, 13 Hydralisks. But... I mean, there was technically a Robo Bay added on, but it was never really used. So the Phoenix is just going to go absolutely to town to any unit that finds itself stranded in the middle of these locations. Anything. But he's looking for Hydralisks, definitely. Compared to those Roaches, no need to lift those up. Just go for the Hydras, go for the Hydras, and now transition onto triple Void Ray production. Um, and 
he sees the greater spy. He already saw it before with uh, something. I'm not quite sure what, uh, but he did see it before. So these Phoenix are really doing a very, very good job. Had had we seen Jadon go quicker, then it would may have worked out for him against this. But look at this. Blinding Cloud hit a lot of those Stalkers. The Stalkers aren't actually doing too much to these Roaches that are caught between the Force Fields. But all the Phoenix coming back now for the reinforcement, killing off the Vipers very, very quickly. Rain looking to take the 2-0 swiftly here. And there you go. GG. Rain will take it, and that means we now know our last two remaining players here in the tournament. It's going to be SOS, the WCS 2013 champion, going up against SK Telecom T1's Reign for that final spot in Cologne. All right, guys, we are going to go to a short commercial break. But before I do that, don't forget, guys, you can go over to ESL TV's Facebook. So facebook.com slash ESL TV. Uh, follow the page as well as... Um, scroll down to the picture of myself with this t-shirt, leave a comment there, and then you have the chance to win this shirt. Signed by the top eight from WCS Europe Season 1. All right, guys, we're going to go to that commercial break, and then when we're back, we're going to have the final series, Rain versus SOS.